a new drug was developed a few days ago, or at least it was released a few days ago, the 26th of October in Paris. And it is, I believe, a vaccine for the HIV virus, but not a vaccine in the way you would think. It doesn't introduce it into the system. It stops it from splicing the DNA strand, the RNA strand rather, stops it from splicing its RNA and turning it into, and then picking up a piece of, what happens is the HIV virus is different than other viruses in that it attacks the, the immunity system itself, the immune system. So it's as if the immune system is at war with HIV. It's not a one-way thing, not like a virus that's going to a cell that's going to go in and do put a virus and then it's going to go, the, and then the immune system comes and wipes out all these viruses. This is a virus that comes in, goes to the very cell that is going to it, and so it attaches on to the T cell, and the T cell travels. There's a thing called macrophages. I'm going to explain this, the uh, immune system process. The macrophage is a cell in the body that, I believe it's a cell in the body, uh, attaches to the virus, the HIV virus, and gets a blueprint, blueprint readout of the HIV virus. It then, the T cells come and attach to the macrophage. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue with what I was just talking about first, and then go into something new. The, the virus comes into the body and attacks and goes to war with the T cells. The T cells are trying to destroy it. I'm sorry that this is this is, this is uh, like stop, start, stop, start when you're in the passenger seat of a car with somebody. Um, it's very simple to explain it. The macrophage, the immune system response. We'll go from here. The macrophage just kicks it off by attaching to the HIV virus, any virus, but the HIV virus gets a blueprint read out of the virus. Then. This is all happening. Oh, what I was going to say is I'll tell you what the HIV virus is doing while all this is going on. The HIV virus is doing something as the immune system response is happening. So the macrophage is getting the blueprint readout, sending it to a T cell. The T cell comes and attaches to the macrophage, transfers the blueprint readout, and then the T cell has the blueprint readout. The T cell produces more T cells with the identical blueprint readout and B cells with the blueprint readout. The B cells the T cells then continue to do the same thing, produce more T cells and more B cells. The B cells produce plasma. The plasma then produces antibodies that still contain the readout from the macrophage, and those antibodies with that readout track down the virus and neutralize or destroy it. That's the immune system response. It's a blueprint readout cycle that's given eventually through the plasma to the antibodies. The HIV virus during this process is attacking, attaching to the very T cells that are supposed to be carrying the information along and sending it. So they're getting infected and, that, and they're dying off. They're getting turned into virus machines by the HIV virus, by the, by the human immunodeficiency virus. It just goes there. Now, the thing about the cocktail medicine that people have been taking for 20 years is that it just goes after viral proteins. It's in it, it, viral proteins mutate. The virus, HIV virus itself, the, the, the surface of it is mutating to different protein structures. And that may, means that it also, the drug also goes after uh, aspects of the, the virus at certain points along the reproductive system of the virus. But mainly it goes after the proteins which mutate. So the HIV virus has a hard time, rather, the, the, the cocktail medicine has a hard time finding the HIV virus because the virus is mutating. So you'll put a drug in your system and you think it's going to get the virus and then all of a sudden the virus changes into a different kind of protein layout and that particular drug that you're taking is in the system but it's not getting the job done. The person starts to get sick anyway. So that's why these drugs haven't been working. They just invented a new drug that gets the HIV virus. After the HIV virus attaches to a T cell, it attaches to these receptor, receptors, receptacles on the outside, open, open, allowing it to open up and collapse on itself, bringing the HIV virus into the cell, bring it into the cell. Once it's inside the cell, the outer, layering, the outer, la outer layer of the HIV retro, uh, retrovirus dissipates into the cell, and 
remains an RNA strand and three other things that aid the RNA strand in turning into a DNA strand. So there's this RNA strand. The RNA strand then, it's a double helix, is spliced. And what I believe it's by a protein, it is by the splicing process joins together sections of viral code to form messenger RNA, which is the precursor uh, or precursor RNA, which is the precursor for messenger RNA. So effectively, before as the RNA is coming into the cell as a double helix, the process has begun when it is split. It's spl I'm not going to rely on this text. I know what I'm talking about. It's spliced by another part of the virus itself. Like the whole package is ready to go. It just opens like a present and then it just goes to work. This drug inhibits the splicing process. So the HIV virus can travel into a cell, but when the drug is present, the drug is called IDC16. It's a molecule. It's a molecular structure, that, a drug, molecular thing. It stops the splicing process before it happens. So the RNA, tra the virus travels into the cell, opens up, and the RNA is there, but as the RNA tries to be spliced and then receive another aspect of DNA, uh, the messenger, or first maybe messenger RNA, continues on. The, it eventually gets a piece of DNA, so it's an RNA-DNA strand or a combination, and then the RNA is shed and another DNA strand is put on it, and then it is turned into a DNA double helix. You now have viral DNA in your cell. That travels to the cellular DNA structure and is inserted into it into the DNA structure itself. Then the cell becomes infected by the viral DNA and starts producing the virus. This stops it. Either This either stops it, the splicing process, I haven't been able to figure out exactly when it happens. If it's before, it's, it's before. It's before that happens. It's before the DNA is ever formed. It stops the RNA from splicing and taking parts of the DNA, so it just remains as RNA in the system. So the virus is just going to be there, and it's going to be impotent, and that will allow the T-cell to destroy it. It's like being at war with an, with an enemy country, or an enemy uh, with an enemy, and taking away all their guns. That's what this drug does to HIV. It takes away its guns. It's going to completely allow the immune system to wipe out the virus. I still believe that HIV is not a direct cause of AIDS, but it is an immune system virus that weakens the immune system. And anything that can stop the production from happening is good. That can give you a moment. Just give the body two weeks. Take the drug for a week, two weeks. Give the, It's like a, a maybe even a vaccine. Put it in the system. Allow the antibodies to form healthy and wipe out the HIV virus. I don't believe that the virus is a direct cause of AIDS, but the AIDS syndrome, there's no AIDS virus, by the way, I'm so sick of hearing people say AIDS virus, even scientists say it, and it's not a virus. AIDS syndrome, acquired immune deficiency syndrome, it's just a syndrome. It's just a blanket. That is not necessarily related to the HIV virus. HIV virus can weaken your immune system and then you can get sick, but that syndrome is just a degradation syndrome. Could be viral, could be nutritional, it could be environmental, like super, super cold conditions. I mean, anything that's going to weaken your body. If you're not getting enough sleep, you, you can get horrible illness. Like seemingly un unreversible, irreversible illness. But it's not necessarily the virus is doing. The virus is just something else. So they found something that can vaccinate against this, this virus, which is pretty amazing. I mean, it's just part of the evolution of things. They haven't tested it on people yet. They've just done it in laboratory. So I'm thinking, oh, they, I'm thinking it will be, it can stop all RNA reproduction. I don't know. I mean, it's viral RNA. It can stop it. It stops the splicing process. So it's, they even say it's, it's, usable against other viruses. It's a vaccine. It will just... It's a dangerous thing because I, perhaps the body splices RNA into DNA in a healthy way at times. I, I'm, that's, that's something that I'll look at later and learn more about.
So it could be a very heavy, hard drug. But if the RNA splicing thing is only a viral process, this is just an antiviral, antiretroviral drug. And it doesn't do any, it doesn't kill the drug. It just st stops it in place, like stuns it with a beam of light. And then it allows the cops to come and clean up the mess or the troops. It's like a wizard stopping everyone, halting the, halting the troops as the cavalry rush in from the back. Thank you, Shelley. We'll continue.